Hello everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Today we're doing an inside video. We're going to do a recipe. Since it is winter outside and there's really nothing going on with the garden, I figured I'd bring you along inside uh, to cook a, a healthy breakfast. And um, it's whole foods and it's just really simple and really delicious. So what we're making today, the recipe is called Endenburg Squares. It's a mix, it's a halfway between like a fruit crisp and a fruit bar, depending on how you pack your, your crumb layers. So um, very simple, um, it's delicious. You can eat it hot right out of the oven. Well, not right out of the oven. You don't want to burn yourself. Um, or it's really good cold the next day. It is a really good wholesome um, meal. So, and then, like I said, again, it's very, very simple. My oven just let me know that it is preheated to 350 degrees, which is what we need it to be at. And then in the food processor here, I'm going to mix my um, dry ingredients. We're going to be using uh, nuts because it's uh, this is a vegetarian um, um, meal, and so uh, we get a lot of our protein from our nuts. So we're going to be using, um, and I actually triple this recipe because of how much I make at one time, but I'll uh, leave the um, recipe in the description box below. And so I'm going to use, um, I, I doubled the layer first for the bottom, and then I'm going to do another layer on top. Um, but we use two, this will be two cups of um, walnuts. <coughs> I got two cups of walnuts in there and I just buy the halves and pieces um, I don't have to have the fancy hole or the chop because I can do that myself and the hole gets chopped anyway so I just get halves and pieces they actually are a lot cheaper that way so there's two cups of um, walnuts and then to that I'm gonna add two cups of oats and these are just regular um, old-fashioned oats they're not the quick oats, um, and these work for me because they get ground up. I get usually get both quick oats and old-fashioned. Old I buy them in bulk. Um, it's cheaper that way, a lot cheaper. I spend about 75 cents a pound when I buy them that way compared to, I think it's like $1.50 a pound when you buy them in the canister at the store. So we got our... Uh, two cups of nuts and then two cups of oats in there and what that's going to do is it's going to process some of these oats and also prevent the walnuts from making walnut butter which is not what we want we want it to stay dry so it's going to get noisy for a minute but I'm going to go ahead and get this ground up Okay, I'm going to get the food processor out of the way because I'm actually done with that now. And we're going to put our bowl in here. And this is a very hands-on recipe. Um, it's easier to mix it with your hands than um, a spoon. But if you don't like using your hands, by all means, go ahead and use a spoon. Alright, so to our bowl, we're going to add our ground mixture and then I have two more cups of oats that I need to add to that and I didn't grind these ones so there we go very simple 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 and then we're going to add flour to that and for my batch it's going to be two cups of flour the flour and the oats works as a binder okay two cups of flour and you can use all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour, buckwheat flour, gluten-free flour. You can make this completely gluten-free if you'd prefer. Um, very gluten-free friendly. Alright, and then we're going to add one teaspoon of salt. And I use pink Himalayan salt. I have an open one around here. There it is. Had to find it. I buy these when they're on sale, so sometimes I got quite a few around here. And I use, uh, like I said, pink Himalayan salt. It's got a lot more uh, minerals and vitamins than just the regular table salt or the sea salt. So I do that. So that's our dry ingredients. And then we're going to add our wet ingredients to that. And we got oil, 
and then we have ho uh, honey and I use local honey that I get from a, um, one of my friends uh, they're a local beekeeper and um, so I know that this is very good honey you don't want to get the stuff in the store if you can help it a lot of times that that is actually corn syrup labeled as honey and there's a cute little trick that you can tell whether the honey you're buying in the store is real honey or not when you add water and swirl when you put it in a little bowl with some water and swirl the bowl around if it's real honey it'll actually make um, honeycomb shapes in the drop of honey that you put in the water if it's corn syrup or fake honey it won't make those designs at all but anyways a uh, good tip for you there on on honey so I'm going to put in my oil first because that's another trick is to coat your um, measuring item with oil before you use sticky stuff like honey or molasses or maple syrup and I'll help that slide right out another thing I want to uh, touch base with you guys because some people don't know is there is a difference between this type of measuring cup this type of measuring cup and this type of measuring cup there is a major major difference this type of measuring cup goes by volume um, it's how many um, uh, volume wise ounces are in this uh, this goes more by weight or the other way around <laughs> this goes by volume this goes by weight and um, one of the things that you can see um, when you do this is when you put water in here a cup of water is going to equal eight ounces that's how they get their measurements and things like that for, for this type of measurement but if I were to put a cup of water in here and then try to pour it into here it would actually overflow because it's a completely different um, system so you want to make sure you're using this for all your liquids um, and your butters like peanut butter and regular butter are better off measured in here and then your dry ingredients you measure in one of these so there's that information so I'm going to go ahead and add the two-thirds cup of oil that I need for this. And again, I'm just going to make sure my cup's coated and then just pour that in. And I'm just using regular grapeseed oil. Um, I use that for cooking because it's a higher temperature oil um, and it doesn't form toxins when you get it up to high temperatures. Um, olive oil is good for low temperatures but not high. So I just get grapeseed. And then we're going to go ahead and add one cup of the, the honey. Alright, one cup in there. You see how that just came right out? That's because it was greased first with the oil. Alright. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a spoon and get this started and then I'll get my hands in here and we'll get a little dirty. table here I have a lot of soap sitting here and I just got done packaging my soap and I do have a YouTube channel uh, where I share my soap making and I also have a website where you can buy my soap so um, the YouTube channel is Colorful Creations Soap and Crafts and that is my website as well and I'll try to link that information in this video sometimes the links work sometimes they don't but I, they definitely will be in the description box. So, But yeah, I make lots of soap here on the homestead. Soaps and salves and lip balms and bath balms. All sorts of stuff. Alright, so that's good mix. We're going to take that. We're going to take our... We have a 9 by 13 pan. That's what size I use for this batch. And just going to dump it in. press that down and this is what makes it different between a crisp or it can be a bar 
is this bottom layer, if you pack it in really tight, and especially if your mixture is kind of moist like mine is today, it really makes a bottom kind of crust. So it's more like a bar, breakfast bar. Alright, so that's in there really good. I'm going to go wash my hands off and then we're going to put our fruit in. Okay, so for our fruit, um, you can certainly use homemade canned pie filling if you've made it. I buy um, this in the store. Uh, Comstock is a good brand to find. Um, you want to make sure you get the Simply one though. This has no artificial uh, preservatives and no corn syrup. A lot of your pie fillings when you uh, read labels, and we do that a lot here because uh, we do not eat things with corn syrup or whatever in them because that's not exactly the best type of sugar to have. Um, it's more, more or less a very cheap filler sugar that they use for a lot of your foods. So I get this one because it's not made with corn syrup. It's actually made how you would make pie filling at home. Uh, with the cornstarch and uh, the fruit juices from the actual fruit. So uh, we're doing apple today and for this size batch I used two cans and so I'm going to go ahead and open it and just spread it on out. So there's that, and I'm going to add just a little touch to this because it's, it is apple. <clears throat> We're going to just dust the top with um, some uh, cinnamon, like so. And then I'm going to need to go ahead and mix up the rest of the crumbs uh, mixture, and that's going to be our topping. So I'm going to move stuff all the way again. When you have a small kitchen, you really have to learn how to rearrange at times for your space. All right, so I'll be right back and I'll show you how we're going to top this and then get it ready for the oven. All right, so I'm just uh, finishing the final touches on getting this crumb topping together. And like I said, it's the same, same recipe throughout. I just make a lot of this, so it's sometimes easier for me to make two different batches and uh, with the with the topping because I kind of like it more loose kind of like a crumb topping I use um, a little bit less of the liquid ingredients so a little bit less of the oil and a little bit less of the honey but um I just eyeball it kind of based on my preferences so I'm just going to take this and just sprinkle it over top in 350 degree oven for about a half an hour and um, we want to make sure that it's nice and golden brown and it should start bubbling so I'll bring you back here when this is done cooking I'll show you what it looks like okay so here is the finished 
product. Um, you can see it's a little brown on the top. You don't want to wait till it's completely brown because you'll actually burn the underside. And it's bubbling along here. So we're going to scoop some out. And again, you got to be very careful with this because it is very warm. And it's going to fall apart kind of like a crisp does. So there we go. Endenburg squares. Um, it's very nutritious and delicious. It does not taste just like chicken. Um, it's plant-based and it can be made gluten-free. So I will leave the um, recipe in the description box below and leave me a picture or comments if you try this recipe and how much um, you enjoyed it or disliked it even because I definitely want to hear from you guys. So this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. I hope that you're having a wonderful, blessed day today. Bye-bye.